welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. A Palestinian immigrant languishes in prison for killing a U.S. presidential hopeful. But is he guilty or was he framed? Did he actually fire the fatal shots that cut short the life of a young Democratic hopeful? Or was he a patsy? Was he in fact hypno-programmed to take the fall? On this episode of The Conspiracy Show, we investigate the possible framing of Sirhan Sirhan, the man serving life in prison for the murder of Robert F. Kennedy in July 1968. We'll speak to Sirhan's lawyer, who is convinced his client was framed and he has petitioned the U.S. District Court in California for a new trial. We'll also speak with a psychologist specializing in trauma-induced mind control who says it is highly probable Sirhan was a Manchurian candidate, a mind-controlled patsy. We'll also meet an independent researcher who has spent more than four decades piecing together forensic evidence she says proves Sirhan did not fire the fatal shots that killed RFK. And of course, we'll hear from a skeptic who maintains Sirhan is guilty as charged. Me? I just want the truth. And I'm willing to follow it wherever it leads. It is time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid. That's how cynical I am. Is it possible technology can alter weather patterns or is it going to make it? Has been engineered by the Illuminati. I'm here in Center Point, Texas with Galen Ross, the author of The Elite Serial Killers of Lincoln, JFK, RFK, and MLK. Galen, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. It's my pleasure. What happened in uh, the Ambassador Hotel, in the pantry, as Robert F. Kennedy made his way? Well, he was there uh, running for office in the fundraiser in the main uh, hotel. And the quickest way to get to the next meeting would go through the pantry. There were probably 50 people in the pantry. And when they got to the steam tables, the Mater D felt someone trying to get past him, and, but it was actually Sirhan Sirhan with a pistol. The fatal shot was right behind his right ear. The fatal shot was fired less than an inch from behind his right ear, and, uh, um, and all the indications were that Sirhan was in front of him all of the time. Sirhan liked Bob Kennedy supported Bob Kennedy. If he could have voted, he would have voted for Bob Kennedy. There have been a lot of interviews of Sirhan uh, in prison by psychiatrists that had actually put him under hypnosis and tried to get him to recall all of the facts of that event that day. And, and he could recall everything except for about an hour, hour and a half of his time. Well, Sirhan was told by everyone that he was guilty. Everyone said, well, you know, you did this. Thing we got to do is try to save your life. That's really what this is all about. You killed the senator, and uh, you were there. You have a gun. The gun. All the bullets were fired, and this was your gun. You're guilty. They convinced Sirhan that he was guilty. But all the witnesses in the pantry at that time said that Sirhan never got closer than about three feet from Bobby, and was always in front of him. Twelve witnesses. Uh, who placed Sirhan always in front of the senator. No time in any event was he behind. Uh, I have copies of Thomas Noguchi's coroner report in my book. All the shots came from down below, from behind Bobby, and in an upward direction. They showed me a fair amount of evidence that had emerged, starting off with the Noguchi autopsy report. And I couldn't believe how that report was basically ignored and not introduced effectively into, into evidence because it showed quite clearly that Bob was shot from the rear. Whoever was firing was firing from behind and slightly below. All the indications uh, that we have are that there was a lot of pressure on Tom Noguchi to do uh, other than what he did and say other than what he said. Well, if it's accepted that he was in the program, and that he was acting under the control of, of someone else. It's significant because it means he did not, could not have had the conscious intention uh, to uh, commit murder. Michael Shermer is a writer, author, and the publisher of Skeptical Magazine. Michael, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. 
Michael, 12 witnesses present in the pantry at the Ambassador Hotel have sworn out an affidavit stating that at all times, Sirhan was in front of Bobby Kennedy. What are your thoughts? I mean, the defense attorney may say that, but again, people's memory of what they think they saw and remember, especially decades ago, are completely contaminated now because it's been so long particularly in the fog of war, so to speak, the chaos of an assassination in a closed area, lots of noise and screaming and, and echoes and so on. Uh, and then after the fact, trying to reconstruct what happens, you're not gonna get a consistent story like that. He's always been consistent about it, always. There's, there's never been a question that, uh, that there is a total blank of what happened in the, uh, in the pantry. And you know, I believe him. How likely do you think it is that Sirhan Sirhan was hypno-programmed? Oh, I am convinced. I will tell you, in the very beginning of this case, I truly believe Sirhan did it. There was no question. At the time of the shooting, he was on either on rohypnol or some other amnesia-inducing drug. Sirhan has long maintained that he has absolutely no memory of shooting Bobby Kennedy. What do you make of that? Would it surprise you to learn that pretty much every prisoner in the jail with him says they were innocent and they didn't do it? They all say that. It seems that in Sirhan Sirhan's case, the experts have all agreed that this appears to be genuine amnesia that he has, and it looks like he's been handled or programmed in some way. He does talk about this mysterious woman who accompanied him into the pantry. She tapped him on the shoulder. Does that fit the model that this perhaps was his, was his handler and, and the tap on the shoulder was the triggering mechanism? It appears that the woman in the polka dot dress was involved in the operation or was his direct handler. And the triggers might include either some of the reflections, bright lights, mirrors, actually in the hotel lobby, or the tap on the shoulder by the woman. Well, she probably gave him the key word that put him under hypnosis. And she also, uh, they were drinking a cup of coffee, and she probably put rohypnol in his coffee. He could have been conditioned. I really believe he was hypnotized. Yes, uh, he was under her control. And she was the one who switched him on, the one who was seen leaving soon after the, the shooting and even bellowing out, you know, we killed him, we shot him, something of words to that effect. She came through and said, we killed him or we got him or something like that. They? We? What? What'd she say? What if she said, they got him, they got him, they got the senator, and people mistakenly heard we instead of they? Do you think Sirhan, in addition to being given rohypnol, do you think that he was in fact a Manchurian candidate? Oh, very likely. Uh, he's probably the best example of a Manchurian candidate. And, uh, he probably had been uh, trained by the CIA or the FBI, probably most likely the CIA, days or maybe weeks before the shooting. And so he was, he was ready to, to carry out his orders. But it's, it's, it's the best example of a Manchurian candidate that, that I've seen. Well, if it's accepted that he was hypnoprogrammed and that he was acting under the control of, of someone else, it's significant because it means he did not could not have had the conscious intention uh, to uh, commit murder or any other felony uh, that he in fact was following the instructions of the orders of someone else I mean it is the typical um, Manchurian candidate type of scenario I don't think it's possible to create a Manchurian candidate that can do something against their will, not to that extent. However, getting somebody to actually do something immoral, like have sex with you when they don't want to, or murder the president, or anything like that, uh, there's no evidence that that uh, can actually be done. There was beliefs that it could be done uh, decades ago, but most psychologists today believe that can't be done. The whole purpose of the Manchurian candidate is not to get them to do something, it's so that they have amnesia and that means they're resistant to interrogation. And if it's an infiltration mission, they can keep their cover completely intact because they don't even know that their cover is a cover. Well, 
Dan Brown is probably one of the leading experts in the world on this whole area of hypnoprogramming, and he is an expert witness. He has come to the conclusion after three years of working with this man that he was hypnoprogrammed. Remember, he regressed him under hypnosis and took him back to that period of time in his life. Sirhan is a highly hypnotizable uh, con uh, character. I mean, he's on a one to five, he's, ra he's rated a five. <laughs> Hypnosis is not a reliable memory retrieval device. The myth is that memory is like a video recording and you can rewind it and play it back on the theater of your mind and rewatch it. And hypnosis would be like the rewinding machine. That, that isn't how memory works uh, at all. It's constantly changed and, and edited and re-edited and whatever he's doing there, probably just completely making up that story. Um, it isn't anything like rewinding the tape and playing it again. There were so many red flags in this case. But you know it smacks of a cover-up. That I know. If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it's a duck. There emerged what's known as the Brzezinski tape. And in that tape recording that was made at the time of the assassination, the bullets fired in the room were actually heard. 14 shots. I believe it was five people were actually hit. The technology wasn't available uh, at the time of the Sirhan's trial, but it later on became available, and it was, uh, it was very carefully scientifically examined. and it became quite clear that they believed that uh, 13 bullets were fired. And of course, Sirhan's gun only contained eight shots. Right, so people heard 11 shots, there's only 8 shots, therefore there must have been a second shooter. No, there's just echoes in a small uh, closed-in area like that. Uh, one uh, shot can sound like two uh, with an echo. And again, people are just remembering, I think I heard uh, you know, 8, no, it was 9, no, it was 10, no, it was 11. These are just eyewitness accounts, ear, ear witness accounts that are not reliable. 14 shots fired, yet Sirhan Sirhan was was firing a, an Ivor Johnson 8-shot 22 pistol. Roosevelt Greer, unofficial bodyguard for Bobby, well, he grabbed uh, Sir Ann's hand and was beating it against the steam table. Five uh, witnesses quite clearly said that after the second shot, Sir Ann's hand was pinned to the table. This is pretty powerful evidence of, uh, of innocence. I mean, the defense attorney may say that, but uh, I believe that all the shots were fired from that gun, so obviously they couldn't have pinned it down after the second shot. So clearly there really were two shooters. But then there's another problem. Aside from the fact that you had five victim bullets retrieved, you had four shots to Senator Kennedy. That's nine. The gun only holds eight. There are serious questions that have arisen with respect to what's known as the neck bullet that was taken out. I have shown proved absolutely that the Kennedy neck bullet that they gave to the examiners was a fake. That was a substitute. How do I know that? The markings on the base of the bullet. Pretty in hard indications that, that uh, there was a substitution of bullets. The LAPD and the FBI both uh, very systematically destroyed evidence. They refused to interview key witnesses. Some of the witnesses they interviewed, uh, they even uh, discounted what they said and said they were lying. And, and so it was a, an effort by the CIA, the FBI, and, L and the LAPD to cover up the killing of Bobby Kennedy. You had over 2,000 photographs, and then you had the destruction of the ceiling panels and the door frames. Now why would you do that? They just follow orders, and they know that they're supposed to shut up and, and never talk about it, because they, they could be involved themselves in, in, in criminal charge. Well, OJ's defense team accused the LAPD of the same thing. <laughs> so what? I mean, yes, of course, sometimes this goes on. Everybody knows this goes on. That, that, but that doesn't really say anything about the 
guilt or innocence of the uh, accused. Um, I think in the case of Sirhan, it isn't anything like uh, the racial accusations against the LAPD or any motive that they would have. What would be their motive? I, I just don't see it. The uh, elite, wealthy leaders of the, of the world or the, this country could do anything they want and, and get by with it. The laws did not apply to them. I do know something is rotten in Denmark. There were so many red flags in this case. But you know it smacks of a cover-up. That I know. If it looks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, and walks like a duck, it's a duck. They have their killer, so they say. So there's no point in going any further into it. And the same thing is true with JFK and RFK and MLK. They had their killer, and they weren't interested in facts or the truth. So if Sirhan Sirhan didn't fire the fatal shots that yes. killed Bobby Kennedy, who did? It was a security guard that was right, standing right behind Bobby. His name was Thane Eugene Cesar. The FBI and the LA Police Department uh, interviewed this security guard, but never as a suspect, but only as a witness. Was Thane Eugene Cesar also a Manchurian candidate? It's, uh, it sort of fits the pattern. He, he, did, he did his job, he killed Bobby. No, absolutely not. Dan Eugene's, I wish I could tell you more about that, but it has to remain sealed. I'm not, you know, I'll be 83. I'll write it down, and after I'm dead, open it up. <laughs> they have their killer, so they say. So there's no point in going any further into it. Yeah, the same thing is true with JFK and RFK and MLK. They had their killer and they weren't interested in facts or the truth. I spoke with his lawyer, William mm -hmm. Francis Pepper in New York. Okay. He's seeking a new evidentiary trial. Do you think he deserves one? Do you think he'll get one? Uh, he won't get one. Uh, and just like the JFK uh, killing, uh, that will never go into court. I expect we will. our motion will be denied. The people involved in and those three major killings are very high up people within this, this nation. I hope I'm wrong about that. Uh, I, I think the power of the case now and the defense that we've been able to develop to this point in, in time is something that the forces that are very powerful in this country and who played a role in this assassination uh, will never want to see the light of day. Who wanted Bobby dead and why? Lyndon Johnson uh, felt that uh, Bobby was going to try his best. In fact, I think he's made some statements that he was going to do his best to get to the truth of the killing of his brother. And so the only way he could really get to the roots is to become president and to fire J. Edgar Hoover and put someone in his place that would actually do the proper investigation. What they will do is to try very hard uh, to just to keep it uh, under the radar, keep it out of sight, and eventually Sirhan will die. Uh, we have concerns about his health now, so he, he will eventually pass away. That makes it academic. And there will be books written or maybe even a movie done, but that all goes away. And the history books will still reflect the fact that this, uh, this Palestinian terrorist, whom some people have called the first terrorist, you know, uh, killed Robert Kennedy, and we're that, so we're swimming upstream trying to get this get this story out and to get this matter into an evidentiary hearing, which, in my view, would have to lead to a trial, a new trial, or a dismissal of the charges. And Let's recap. Sirhan Sirhan maintains he cannot remember shooting and killing Robert F. Kennedy, but he does remember a mysterious woman who accompanied him into the pantry. Under hypnosis, he recalls that she tapped him on the shoulder as Bobby entered the pantry of the Ambassador Hotel, and he suddenly assumed a range-firing position. Several witnesses, including campaign workers, reporting seeing this woman. One couple saw her leaving the hotel and overheard her say, we shot him, we shot Senator Kennedy. Professor Daniel Brown says that after 60 hours of interviewing Sirhan, 
he has concluded he is highly hypnotizable. LA County's chief medical examiner at the time insisted RFK was shot at close range from behind. Yet 12 eyewitnesses have sworn out affidavits affirming that Sirhan was at all times in front of Bobby Kennedy. Audio recordings taken at the Ambassador Hotel the night of the shooting clearly reveal that there were at least 11 shots fired, perhaps as many as 13. Yet Sirhan was holding an eight shot 22 caliber pistol. For those of you who don't believe in conspiracies, I invite you to examine in earnest the details surrounding the murder of Robert F. Kennedy. Pay close attention to the coroner's report. Ask yourself that age-old question, qui bono, who benefits? And remember, a conspiracy is not just always a theory, it's often a crime. And now I'd like to know what you think. You can contact me here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid.